again, Rail fans, and welcome back to another video. We begin this journey on March 5th, 2021, and we are located at CP Kyle on the CSX Scotts Long Secondary. The particular reason why we came out on this day is because the two coal trains that travel on this line, CSX N and E312, were proposed to meet at this siding on this stretch of the line. However, when we got there, the plan was changed for them to meet at Willis Siding, which is west of us here, so... so much for that. While we were here, we happened to catch CSX E312 as it makes its way westward from Bryce, North Carolina, the James E. Rogers Energy Complex, back to Princeton, Indiana, for more loads of coal. Fast forward about 24 hours and we are back out the next day on March 6th, 2021. On this particular day, we came out to McCord Park in Worthington, Ohio for one purpose and one purpose only, to catch an NS Intermodal train, 26N, which was coming towards Columbus, and it had two BNSF locomotives pulling it. Not even five minutes have passed since we got there, NS 26N came speeding by the park, showing no signs of slowing down sporting a nice pair of BNSF Heritage 2 painted units.
Let's take a quick look at the two GEs pulling 26N on this day. BNSF 5034, a GE C44-9W which was built in 2004. Following 5034 was BNSF 7727, a GE ES44DC which was built a year later in 2005. Now, GVOs wearing Heritage 2 paint are pretty rare, as because when those locomotives were built, they were built during the transition period where BNSF was changing its paint scheme from H2 to H3, and was also the transition from Dash 9s to ES44s. After seeing the BNSF-led 26N, we then moved to just over a week later on... March 14th! 2021. On this particular day, I was at my local train store doing some shopping. While I was there, I was getting some heads up from multiple different people that NS8102, the Pennsylvania Railroad Heritage Unit, was leading a coal train up the Sandusky District. Knowing that I have seen Pennsylvania twice before, one time in 2015... One time in 2018, I originally thought nothing of it, and since the original train I was planning on seeing that day wasn't coming, I figured why not. And so, we drove out to McCord Park to catch the train. It didn't take it very long for it to show up, and this time I wanted to do something different in terms of camera work. I did not extend the legs on my tripod at all, but I did extend the neck of the tripod to see if I can get a decent lowdown shot. And as you're about to see here, it did a pretty decent job if you ask me. After seeing the PRR Heritage Unit for the third time, we then moved to the very next day on March 15th, 2021, and we are once again at CP Kyle on the CSX Scotts Launch Secondary. The particular reason why we came out on this day is because CSX Q147 had two BNSF units pulling it, so we came out to see if we can try and catch it. When we got there, I saw some headlights coming from the CSX Scotts Launch Secondary. But it wasn't coming from the east this time, it was coming from the west. Its eastbound counterpart train Q146 got to the siding first, but came to a stop just short of the switch. And what I realized is that the two intermodal trains were going to meet at this siding. Eventually, CSX Q147 with the two BNSF units leading it eventually came up to this stretch of the Scots Long Secondary. Unfortunately, we barely had any light left but I did want to try the low down shot again that I got last time when we got the PRR Heritage Unit. And this time, it actually turned out pretty good despite the lack of light.
now, I did not record any more of Q147 with my Canon video camera because it started to rain and I did not want to risk damaging my camera. So this is all you're going to see of Q147 in this video. Anyways, let's move on, shall we? Shortly after Q147 took the siding, its counterpart train Q146 was granted permission to travel the final legs of the Scotsong Secondary before terminating at Buckeye Yard later that night. After seeing the two intermodal trains meet on CSX, we then moved to March 18th, 2021. On this particular day, we came down to the COMRC club to do the weekly operating session like we always do. But as we came into the parking lot, I heard a horn of a Norfolk Southern southbound train that was closing in. Now, the train I was able to catch on this day was a Norfolk Southern southbound empty coke train. Now I'm not sure if it's a coke train that's running on NS, or if it would eventually end up on the Canal River Railroad as KN50. But if any of you do know, please let me know in the comments section below. Definitely in the 
After seeing the empty Coke train, we then moved to March 20th, 2021. On this particular day, we came out to the Rings Road Railroad Crossing, which is along the CSX Scottsong Secondary. The Scottsong Secondary at that time was pretty busy, so we came out to see what we can find. The first train we saw on this evening was a CSX G022 grain train heading westbound led by two toasty GEAC 4400CWs still sporting yellow nose 2 paint. And as you're about to see, the crew wasn't wasting any time at all with this train. Shortly after GO22 cleared, and shortly after the sun went down, the next train that we saw was CSX Q147, the daily stack train that heads to North Baltimore, Ohio, also heading westbound. At this time, I didn't bother panning my cell phone as the locomotives passed, because there was barely enough light to do that anyways.
As we watched Q147's containers run against the remnants of the sunset, this will now conclude yet another video. We will see five more trains the very next day, but that's going to get its own video since I will be able to do that more often as the days get longer and longer and we take more separate trips instead of integrating them all into one video. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, hit the like button down below, leave a comment and tell me what you think of it, subscribe to my channel, and tap the bell button to be notified when I get a new video out. This is All Ohio Rail Fan, signing out.